That's a bit tight. I need to stop eating mints. Uh, I don't even want to go this way. I want to go this way. Thing is, it's not really a photography video unless you film yourself walking through a gate at the start of it, so. Job done, right. Hello everybody, and uh, welcome to what is now my local woods. This is just across the road from where I live, and uh, it's the first time I've been here. Very nice. First impressions is um, I'll come here a lot, along with many dogs who appear to live in the area and do most of their running around here. Loads of them. Uh, anyway, you may remember in last week's video that I spoke mostly about this photo. And if you haven't seen that video, please go and check it out and also subscribe maybe if you haven't already. But when I posted that video, both on YouTube and Instagram, I saw lots of comments on both platforms that spoke about the rope that's in the photo just to the right hand side. And lots of people were suggesting that they think I should have got rid of the rope. And today I thought I'd talk a little bit about why I didn't. And also, I thought I'd, um, I'd try and get some photos in my new local woods. Although, as I mentioned last week, I'm the furthest thing from a woodland photographer. So, actually, I guess that would be like a desert photographer, and I'm not, I'm not that either. So, also, actually, while I was in Scotland a few weeks back, I mentioned that uh, on a bright, sunny day, one of the last places you should go is the woods or a forest or something, because you really can't control the shadows in a place like this. But um, here I am. It is a lockdown, so. I am limited by where I can go. Anyway, this photo. There's a, um, a bit of a chase going on between a greyhound and a pug. I wonder who's going to win that one. Uh, now the reason, the greyhound, the reason I didn't get rid of the rope in that photo is exactly the same reason I didn't centre the laptops in this photo. It's the same reason I didn't get rid of the cars in this photo, the people in this photo, and it's the same reason I didn't get rid of all the boys or buoys, if you're American, in this photo. And it's a reason that's kind of reappeared in my consciousness over the last few weeks since Emily and I have begun furniture shopping for the new house, which I know sounds completely random. I will try and explain. Basically, if you've done any furniture shopping of late, particularly wood, you might have noticed that there's a trend, a massive trend in popularity for reclaimed wood. Basically wood that's had a previous life. It's been used for other stuff. It might be scratched, scuffed, cracked. It's just used and people will pay more for it than brand new stuff. I can't really figure out why, but I think it's pretty much the same reason that cookbooks 20 years ago had perfectly, manicured's not the right word, perfectly kept photos of their, um, their dishes. Whereas now in food photography, there'll be crumbs everywhere, the pies will be asymmetrical and all homemade looking. There'll be more of a, a sprinkle of that approach as opposed to half a teaspoon of this. And basically, I think all of that is a culmination of people wanting a bit of character and a bit of imperfection from their stuff versus what they used to want, which I think was perfection. And I think, I mean, I'm not a social scientist, but I think that's because of advertising in large part. We have been sold perfection so much that now we want something that's not perfect. We want a bit of personality. And broadly speaking, that's the exact reason that I try and moderate my use of the clone stamp tool. Because when you're a photographer and you use software, you have the chance to remove anything that you might consider distracting from your photo. And if you use it too much, I think you can get rid of some of that personality. And now if you're anything like me, when it comes to advertising, you switch off immediately. Anytime you see uh, a print car advert, that's just a photo of a pristine car, even though it's driving through mud. Or if you see an ad of a tourist destination that you know is busy, and yet there are no tourists there, there's just one sort of very attractive couple prancing around wearing white linen. We know more than ever before when we're being lied to. And therefore, we really, really appreciate honesty in the stuff that we see, the stuff that we buy, and the stuff that we love. And it's no different with photography. I don't think, and sometimes I think you can still have completely beautiful, amazing, attractive work that isn't perfect. And in fact, if it was perfect, it would end up detracting from the work. That's my theory. I have no idea whether it's actually the case. Like I said, I'm clearly not a social scientist, but um, yeah, I think advertising has a lot to do with it, which I know I'm partly responsible for since I make my living on the internet. You probably had to watch a pristine ad before this video. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Wales. Uh, so yeah, to summarise, basically, anytime you've got a photo that you think has a distracting element in it, ask yourself if it really is a distracting element just because uh, it ruins the balance of your photo or it doesn't work for colour symmetry or something like that. Ask yourself, does it add to the photo in terms of story? Does it give it character? Does it give it personality? And if it does, then it's worth considering keeping it because I think in many cases it can make your photo much more compelling, which ultimately is better than your photo looking symmetrical, for example. By the way, I, um, I have a bit of a test that I try and use to help me try and work out whether or not something builds character within the image, whether or not I should clone stamp a certain object out of an image or not. And that test is largely based around context. Does the object that I'm wondering about, does it give the image context? Does it give the story context? So for example, the rope in that photo that I shot last week, that tells me and the viewer that someone has probably used it to swing across the river and therefore you get a feel of how the stream has been used and that basically becomes the story. Same kind of thing with this photo I took in Devon a couple of months ago. At the bodyboard, I decided to keep it in the photo even though lots of people would probably argue it's a distraction. I kept it in because that alone tells you that the beach is probably used for surfing. It kind of paints the picture. However, somewhere like this, let's say for example, I wanted to take a photo of these trees. I mean, not the most amazing photo in the world, but let's say for the sake of argument that my composition that I found included um, this twig down here, that. And let's say that I thought that was distracting. Now that is not integral to the storytelling of the photo. I don't think I could happily get rid of that because there's hundreds of others. And if I think it's distracting, it's not gonna be the end of the world to get rid of it. And basically that is how I try and decide whether or not I can afford to get rid of something or not. Does it really change the story if I do get rid of it? And if it does, then more often than not, I think it's worth keeping. It's not a black and white rule, to be honest. It's some, um, there is lots of gray area, but that's kind of the test I use to, to work out what I should Clone stamp. Right, I've got the GoPro on, as you can see. Let's go and try and find some things to take photos of. Right, I've, uh, I've got the 8 to 18 on. I'm gonna try and get some relatively wide angle photos. I mean, any photos would be fantastic today, to be honest, based on the fact that, like I said, woodland photography is not really my thing. This looks like a nice scene though. All these leaves on the floor, a bit lower down. Folks on the tree. Old man noise. Oh, hang on. If I go back a bit, I might be able to line these three trees up quite nicely. Uh, somewhere like this. One, two, three in the background. I, I quite like that. I mean, I did say wide angle. I think I'm at about full frame equivalent of 30 mil at the moment, which is not that wide. Ugh, never mind. Bit of an odd place for a bench. I mean, there's not, not really a view, but uh, some benches are put in odd, odd spots, aren't they? Just, oh, look what's over here. Ah, this is more my kind of vibe. Nice. Basically, first sight of something outside of the woods, I get excited, which, uh, which I think tells me something about what I like to take photos of. Oh yes, that is a, that's a lovely scene. Looks moody in here. I wonder if there's anything, anything in here. This way. And it's kind of all still a bit messy, really. Hmm. There's definitely more to explore here, though, than I thought there would be. 
which for future videos at least is a good thing particularly if there's atmosphere and fog around well i think that's about it for this week's video not the biggest haul of woodland photos i admit but uh maybe next week i'll still be a bad woodland photographer next week actually so that's probably not going to happen Anyway, thank you for watching and a big thank you to this week's video sponsor, Skillshare. So Skillshare is an amazing online platform full of thousands of classes in all kinds of different creative pursuits from creative writing, illustration, business and productivity, photography, all kinds of stuff basically. And I'm taking as many classes as I possibly can at the moment in productivity because I'm the sort of person who, well, I shun organisation at any opportunity. I mean, you should see my calendar or my email foldering system or my desktop actually, my desktop is the worst. But yeah, I'm taking loads of classes in productivity and it's helping. My desktop is still quite bad, but um, we'll get there. Anyway, the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial to Skillshare Premium. So be able to check it out yourself. And if you stay on after your trial, you'll pay less than $10 a month to access to all the thousands of classes there are. And uh, you'll be able to learn all kinds of stuff, including productivity like me. I will sort out that desktop. Anyway, so a huge thank you to Skillshare for their continued support of this channel and a big thank you to you for watching. Hopefully I was clear with my um, talk about perfection in photography and I'll see you next time for some more musings. Or maybe I'll just buy another packet of mints. Again, you'll have to watch last week's video to, um, to know what I'm on about. If you Never mind, I'll see you next week.